Well, I'd say welcome back to another edition of uh, 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse, but as you can tell by looking at me, I look like shit and I feel like shit. And I have to go back to something I previously said about mental health. And the reason I haven't posted anything for the last few days was because I went down that fucking rabbit hole again. And like I said before, you know, I did reach out for help on Facebook for a number, but when you're dealing with multiple fucking issues, it's like stacking bricks up on a fucking 2x4 until the 2x4 snaps. And unfortunately, I snapped. I went down that fucking rabbit hole. I couldn't talk to anyone. I couldn't function. I basically was immobilized here for at least three days. Um, people called me up. I couldn't tell them what was going on because I really couldn't talk. And that's what people don't get about the fact that, you know, everybody says, well, you know, reach out, reach out, reach out. When you're in that situation that I was in, that I am in right now, you can't reach out. Um, you just don't have the tools to reach out and that becomes a fucking problem. Luckily, with the help of some friends and phone calls and shit and somebody prodding me that I managed to push myself out of it, but, like I said, you know, probably isn't what anybody wants to hear, but this is what happens. And I'm sure I'm not the only one struggling with this shit. Um, right now, I was diagnosed with supposedly coronary artery disease and um, left with that to deal with. Now I have no primary care doctor because the people I had were fucking dropping the ball all the time and I got sick of it. But it's really hard to find a decent fucking doctor nowadays and I got tried to find one that specialized in older people, because I guess that's what I got to do. So I went through the insurance company to do that and got a, you know, found somebody, but I can't get an appointment with them until after the first of the fucking year. So they referred me to somebody locally, and basically when I drove by this office, it looked like a converted fucking garage, and I don't see any cars in this parking lot. So no, I'm not doing that either. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but... I just wanted to explain that whole situation. Um, back to the movie thing. However, I missed a few. I don't even know where I'm at. But while I was, you know, sort of like immobilized, I watched a bunch of stuff. Uh, Burt Gordon's The Beginning of the End with Peter Graves, which had the uh, giant grasshoppers attacking Chicago and climbing up on cardboard buildings and shit like that. Of course, uh, you know, Burt, Burt, Burt's still with us, 100 years old. God bless him. But, you know, it did have one scene that was totally tasteless of a deaf guy being killed by a grasshopper. He's like, and then, he, you know, they, they said that was tasteless, but considering what else goes on, what the fuck. Uh, the other one I caught on Tubi was The Indestructible Man with Lon Chaney Jr. as Charles Butcher Benton, who pulled some robbery and got $80,000 and got caught and sentenced to death, but they never got the money. And Cheney only speaks in the beginning of the film before he's electrocuted, and they use the segue that the massive dose of electricity fried his vocal cords. His body gets picked up by resident mad scientist um, Michael Shane and his assistant Joe Flynn. Yes, that Joe Flynn from McHale's Navy. And they bring the butcher back to life. Uh... Like I said, he can't talk. He goes after his former gang members, uh, Joe Marcello and Squeamy Ellis, great names, until his lawyer uh, who was in, in on the heist breaks down. And um, he's hunted through the Los Angeles sewer system, shot a bunch of times, burned up with a flamethrower, and eventually electrocuted on some massive grid. Um, from what I understand, Cheney told the director that he didn't want any dialogue after... after uh, 12 noon or something like that, I guess it was because uh, of his uh, drinking problem. But uh, all in all, it's a pretty good film, and Cheney carries it off. You know, he was a big guy, and always played a big monstrous guy, so it all worked out. So what else do we have here? Uh, my dog comes in to bother me. This ain't the one that has the surgery. This is the other one. She's on the couch. We're going back today. Um, Don Dollar's Night Beast. Um an outer space alien tour de force that um, some of the scenes look really, really fucking good and scary, and other scenes, it's just, you know, the plastic monster head menacing people. Um, 
lot of really cool for the uh, the time special effects guys being disintegrated by laser blasts, um, the monster disemboweling victims, ripping heads off, tearing chests off, whatever, and uh, you know a cheap you know thrown in sex scene for whatever, and a psychotic biker. So not really bad at all. But what Halloween season wouldn't be complete without the immortal zombie? Uh, this one has uh, the 4K version here. Um, of course, when Zombie was released by Jerry Gross originally, there wasn't uh, a bare part of any wall in Manhattan that didn't have that We Are Going to Eat You poster slapped on it with the worm faced zombie. And, you know, the catchphrase uh, If you like loved one of the dead, you'll just eat up zombie. And uh, this is the film that actually put Fulci on the map. Um, you know, it starts out in New York with an abandoned ship with a big Tor Johnson like zombie on it who takes a bite out of a cop. Then it goes to the lost island of Matul, where Dr. Menard, played by Richard Johnson, who was actually in the running for playing James Bond at one point, is the resident doctor, and the dead are coming back to life, and he has to shoot them through the head. Um, Ian McCulloch, Tisha Farrow, Al Cliver, and Anit, uh, Avena Gray get on there. Um, of course, there is total mayhem and some show-stopping effects that have yet to be topped by anyone today. I don't care what anybody says. Um, really hard to top uh, the zombie versus the shark scene. The three-foot splinter through Olga Carlotis's eyeball. Um, and then her, sequen her, her becoming the buffet for a bunch of zombies. Heads getting blown off, throats getting torn out, zombies rising from, from the dead, yada yada. Uh, the whole cast, except for uh, Tisha Farrow, was reunited at the Cinema Wasteland show, and Richard Johnson proudly told me that somewhere in the world right now, zombies playing. Uh, I was actually set up right behind them, right behind Ian McCulloch, um, who you know was also in Dr. Butcher, MD, and didn't know that... Um, there was actually a butcher mobile, that operating room thing, the whole bit. So, you know, it was really cool interacting with the cast of Zombie. And um, my last film that I just watched the other night was The Beyond, another Fulci classic that was released here as Seven Doors to Death by Aquarius Releasing. Of course, this was chopped up. It had the blurb, uh, you know, endorsed by Toby Hooper and Kim, Kim Hankel from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, it's not a zombie film, even though there are some dead guys walking around. It's more of a haunted house supernatural thriller that really goes out balls to the walls with blood, gore, um, all kinds of shit, because it's, it's in a hotel in Louisiana that's being renovated that was built over one of the seven gates of hell. And it opens up with this warlock being basically crucified, chain-whipped, and dissolved with acid. And, of course, he comes back to life, and there's a lot of eye-gouging, uh, gore, um, uh, death by tarantula, um, just some show-stopping shit that basically it all ends in hell. Um, the protagonists, uh, David Warbeck and um, Katriana McCall, end up in this weird little fucking place with bodies laying on the ground, and they turn around, and their eyes are glazed over, and then they disappear. Um... Another show-stopping effect is this little girl is possessed and they don't know it and she turns on Catriona and David blows her head off with a huge magnum pistol right in front of us. Uh, really show-stoppers. So, um, yeah, that's what I've been watching, you know, since this whole thing. It's now Monday. Uh, I am taking my dog back to the vet to get some answers because this, again, has been another nightmare with stitches being open and me driving down to the fucking vet like five times since the original surgery. Uh, nightmare to deal with. I haven't had much sleep, and that might be adding to the whole thing, but I'm trying to snap out of it. So, um, again, people that reached out, I thank you. I really appreciate it. But like I said, when you get in that deep, dark hole, there ain't much you can do to help yourself. And if people aren't aware of how fucking bad off you really are, um, like I said, I'm just lucky I got some good friends that sort of tried to call and talk me out of it and shit like that. And I'm feeling a little bit better, but I got to get past today, so... Again, my thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll catch you on the flip side.